unit in this video we're going to look at how to turn our part down to diameter and length. Remember we're making this part here this step bar. We're right now sticking out about five inches. Uh, we're going to cut back to about four and a half. One, two, three, four steps, one inch long. Four and a half is going to take us to here. So we want to overshoot this when coming back this way and always start with the largest diameter first. Largest, next to the largest, next to that one, and then the smallest. So we're going to take this big diameter first and take it down to 1.125. It's 1 and 250 now. So we're going to go back about four and a half because when we flip the part around to do this in, that's when we'll cut this one to length. So what I want to show you in this video is how to turn it down to diameter and length. So in the last video, you saw how we faced it, center drilled it. This video, we're going to turn it, and I've already started turning it just a little bit, so we'll see how this does. We calculated the RPM at 355, roughly, and our feed rate is about 9,000. And if you remember from the video, or the PowerPoint actually, in the PowerPoint it says our feed rate should be for roughing 10 to 20 thousandths, for finishing 1 to 10 thousandths. And our depth of cut for roughing is going to be, uh, let's see, 30 to 60 I think is what it is, and then 5 to 30 for finishing, or whatever you need for finishing. Okay, so we're not going to do all of it that we need to do here because it would take too much time. I'm only allowed so much room on YouTube. We're going to take it to the line, so I know I'm overshooting quite far. Now what I do is I'll stop it here, and remember when we measure, we always want to measure coming from this side, from the tailstock side. We just took about 65 thousandths off. We're at one point uh, 185, so we need 50, 60 thousandths to go. We'll take another 60 off of it, and then we'll get it to length, okay? So don't be measuring this way. It's going to really mess you up, but just nice and easy. Lay your arm on the, on the tail stock, bring your jaws in, and that way you can move them and see what the smallest dimension you get. See, going up and down smallest dimension is the actual dimension. So I need to take about 60 thousandths off this part. Uh, if it's a hair under, I'm okay because these are going to be threaded. Okay, so once I get to the end of my cut, I'm going to zero out my micrometer dial. Then I'm going to bring it back one round, take it back to the home position, and I'm going to take it back to where it was, zero, and then I'm going to take another 60, maybe 60 three. We'll see how that does. So let's take this off. Now the good thing about this end, I know I'm going to take some more metal off of this end. So one thing I can do actually is just stop the machine right here. Probably not a good thing to do with carbide, but we're okay with high speed bits. And I can measure it right here. And if you see, I'm at 1.125. And that's the diameter I want it to be. So I'll, I'll just start it back up because this is going to be turned down to a half inch at this end anyway. So I really, if I mess it up here, I'm going to come back and clean it up and finish it up anyway. So the diameter I want to get to is 1.125. I started out at 1.250. So we want to bring it down, uh, it was an eighth of an inch. So I took a 60, about 61 while ago. I'm taking 63 now. There is a little bit of play in the cross slide. Uh, we did pull the gib out the other day, we adjusted the gib. And uh, what we'll do next is something pretty neat that uh, you may not have seen before. But it's, an in, it's a way that we can get exactly three inches of length without using uh, our calipers, without using a steel roll. Some people will take a steel roll and put on there and mark three inches. That's not the accurate way to do it. Some people will take their calipers and scribe a line at three inches. That's not the way to do it. They can take some Daikin Blue, put on there, and scratch it. Eh, it really doesn't work that well. I'm going to show you a technique that involves a dial indicator on the carriage attached to the headstock that will allow us to get exactly three inches. 
and this is key, so I want you to pay close attention to this. I'm raising the guard up just slightly because it wants to hit here. So we're going to let it go ahead and finish this cut. After this cut, I'm going to come back and show you how to set it for length because we just did our diameter pad. Now, we're plus or minus five or ten thousandths on this part. This is first semester, brand new students. So we're not trying to get plus or minus a half thousandths. If we get plus or minus five, we're doing good. So that's why I went ahead and took all of the 63 at one time. Uh, if I were trying to get close, I would have taken about 40, then maybe 10, and then 10, and just a little bit more. I would have taken it in several increments. Okay, so let's stop the machine and see what we have. And remember, if your part's a little hot, it's going to be just a little bit big. The bigger that part gets, the hotter it gets. So there you can see our diameter is 1.125. That's exactly what we want. It took two passes. The first one was 61, 62. The second one was 63. So what we're going to do now, we're going to set our dial back to zero so we can always get back here. We're going to pull it back. Take it back to home. Home position, home position is when the tool bit is right between the center and my work. Okay, so now what I want to do, I want to show you how to get the length set on this thing. And I hope this indicator, I hope you can see it okay, because this is extremely, extremely, extremely important. Uh, and I'm trying to think of a way that I could uh, get a little bit closer, but I just hope you can see this. Make sure the tip of your indicator is tight. We're going to try to keep the indicator in a straight line. And I just barely want to touch it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, uh, let me get my pliers. I uh, see a few little chips hanging off there that just kind of aggravate me, get in the way. So we're going to take the part up to the face of the work and I'm going to move it to the left. And here's where a nice little piece of paper comes in handy. We could use a feeler gauge, 10,000 feeler gauge, and let it touch that. And that's what we would do if we were using carbide. But I'm just going to touch the face with a piece of paper uh, right about there until we just get a little pinch. Okay, so now I know that I'm actually at the front of the part. So right there we are at zero. So let me back this up just a hair. I don't want to run out of indicator movement. Try to keep my indicator in a straight line. Let me take this off so maybe you can see better with this off. Keep our indicator in a straight line this way and horizontally, okay? Straight this way and horizontally because remember in trig, uh, it could throw us off quite a bit. And let's see if we can adjust this indicator over to zero. And we can move it a little bit here. All right, now we move our tool back and now I'm gonna take the indicator and I'm gonna go one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rounds. And when I stop, that's exactly one inch. But remember, we want three inches. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to do this again. I'm going to barely bump it. Let me see if I can raise it up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Just like that. I'll take my fine tuner and adjust it just a little bit. And I will go another 10 rounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now that's two inches. More time will give me three inches because one, 10 rounds on this indicator is one inch. Hope you can see that here. A little bit right there and we'll go one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten right there from the face of the work to where the cutter is at now is exactly three inches so what I'm going to do now is a kind of a technique that we came up with some time ago it's called the half round of bump B-U-M-P so I'm going to move it just about a half round I don't touch the carriage right now because the carriage is exactly one, uh, three inches from the front, from the nose. But I am going to try to set my silly little indicator here that's been abused in its whole life. So now when I back up my carriage, 
you see that I'm only making about three quarter of a round. So as the carriage is moving, as soon as it hits my indicator, I stop, I take it by hand to zero, and I'm exactly three inches. So let me show you how this works. We're going to cut this down to one inch. Right there we are. So we're one inch. We're going to take, oh, we'll take 60 this time, 65 the next. Now I don't have to measure anything. The good thing about this, this method of uh, measuring the carriage movement is the measurement and the work has already been done. Now all I have to do is watch my indicator and as my carriage moves toward my headstock, this is the carriage, headstock, as soon as it hits that indicator, I'm going to take it off of the power feed and I'll move it by hand to zero and that will take me exactly to three inches. Our, our uh, RPM is 355, our feed rate's 9. It could be a little bit higher, but I'm looking to get a pretty good finish. Uh, I could be using a radius tool, give me a little bit better finish, but I may come back and just touch it with a little sandpaper. Uh, but really, it's going to be threaded anyway, so I'm not that concerned about it. As you can see, we're about an inch away, we're about three quarter of an inch, and when we stop, he will be exactly three inches. And we're just about to hit the indicator. I'm not even looking at my tool, I'm looking at my indicator. Right there, my indicator just started moving. I'm gonna take it by hand and move it till I get to zero. Right there. And I'm going to zero out my cross speed dial, take it back one round, take it back home, and now by doing it this way I can be assured from the face of this work to this step right here I'm exactly three inches. Okay, So that's what I want you to do on each of your steps. So I'm going to make another video here in just, just a bit to show you a little bit more closely how we do this half crown debunk for length. Uh, because, like I said, we could put marks on here, we could put bluing, we could scrap lines. There's a lot of different ways to do it. But using the dial indicator on the headstock is the most efficient way and most accurate way to get our length. Okay, again, like always, if you have questions, send me a text or an email, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you for watching.